Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be working on Primaris Eradicators in the style of Black Templars. Starting off with basic assembly and gluing, I try to glue it up to the point where it doesn't get in the way of painting. Now after I glued the gun to the first one, I then realized that it gets in the way of too much detail. And so for these eradicators, these push to fit ones, it's best to have the guns separate. The backpack is fine, but the guns need to be separate. Now to add some extra detail to these models, I'm going to use Liquitex Flexible Modeling Paste. And with this, we're just going to basically brush on the modeling paste onto the armor to give it like a distortion or a bumpy effect onto it. In case I cover up any detail, I can use a razor knife to clean out anything and I can use uh, a paintbrush with water to soften it up and remove it so it's there's no worries about accidentally spreading it where it shouldn't go you can easily clean it up I then lay out my tape and then I attach the models to it in preparation for priming For primer, I'm going to use Bright Touch Gray Car Primer. This thing has a very strong bond and it's very good. Once done, I simply flip them over with some new tape and repeat the process again on their backs. Upon completion, uh, the texture looks pretty good. It's not overbearing and it doesn't clog up any of the details. The only issue is with the helmets. It seems to clog up a little bit towards where the helmets reach the back armor. And now with some lead belcher, I coat the entire model in lead belcher. Now I've learned from the, my previous project with the intercessors that I'm not just I'm not going to bother uh, highlighting it with iron breaker. It doesn't show through, so it's not worth the time. And now with a one-to-one -one of Abaddon Black or Nun Oil, or maybe a little more Abaddon Black than Nuln Oil. I then apply this wash with a little bit of water to make it runny all over the model. Now with this I want to make sure all the that it's a very dark color. I just want the underneath silver to shine through just a little bit but not too much. And now with some iron breaker, I'm going to dry brush on all the edges. I don't want the color to get in the center of the armor plates, I just want it on the edges. And once that's done, I'm going to go back and use iron breaker and I'm going to paint silver the exhaust ports on the backpack and the cables that are on its legs. Then with Agrax Earthshade, I'm going to use this and just coat the exhaust ports with it just to add some browning. Although looking back, I should have used Skeleton Horde Contrast. That would have been much better. And now with Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to paint the guns. We're going to start off with a base layer of Mephiston Red on all the... I guess you could say plate covering parts of the gun. Uh, use your own discretion on what these are. And then once that's done, we're going to coat it in Evil Sun's Scarlet. And once that's done, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and coat the entire gun in it. The red and the metal that belongs to the gun. Thank you. 
And then with Evil Sun Scarlet, again, we're going to go back and we're going to highlight the edges of the gun. Basically, the edges of the plates and such all over. And now with Cadian Flesh Tone, Kisla Flesh, and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to paint the sergeant who isn't wearing a helmet. Now, on the cover box, this character is black like a salamander, but I actually don't know how to paint that skin well, so I'm just going to stick back with what I know. So starting off with Cadian Flesh Tone, we then use a one-to-one -one mix of Kislev and Cadian Flesh Tone, and we just cover basically the whole model except for its deep recesses, which this guy has a very furrowed brow, so that's pretty much the recess. Once that's done, we do a one-to-one -one mix of Agrax Earth Shade and water, and we just coat it in. We then go back with our one-on-one -on -one mix of Kislev and Cadian and just highlight the model again. I don't really see that much color differentiation in the gaps, so I'm just going to take pure Agrax Earthshade and apply it directly into his creases. After that, I'm going to go back and use pure Kisla Flesh and do a fine highlight on his high cheekbones and uh, eyebrows. And now with Warp Stone Glow, Snarsnick Green, and Beal Tan Green, we're going to paint the eyes. I like these eyes being green because it is a good contrast from the black armor. Now very carefully with the Warp Stone Glow. We're going to apply in simple brush strokes, this as a base layer, into the eyes. Once that is done, we're going to take the Snarsnick Green and carefully apply it to the uh, centers of the eyes. We just want to fill them in. Use simple basic brush strokes and angle the model just right. Now, sometimes there are mistakes and we can't always get it 100% perfect, and that's where the Beal Tan Green comes in. We apply the Beal Tan Green in, and it basically just centers and cleans up everything. And then we use the Snarsnick Green, and we're just going to apply a dot where we can kind of imagine like some eyes being, like a center focus. And forgive me, I accidentally painted this outside <laughs> uh, shot of the camera. And then with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to paint the Purity Seals. Starting with the Corn Red, we use this and coat the entire Purity Seal in it. Now, there's one Purity Seal per of these Eradicator models. Once that's done, we highlight the entire ring and the center with Mephiston Red. Once that is done, we take the Evil Sun Scarlet and apply it to the upper half, the upper 60%, and a dot in the center. And now with Rhinox Hide, Mornfang Brown, Demon Bull Brown, and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to paint his belt and equipment. Learning our lesson from the Intercessors, we're going to start with the belt first. Rhinox Hide goes all over the belt, the leather belt that goes around him. Once that is done, we're going to take Mornfang Brown and paint the square-shaped boxes it. We're going to give it a coat of Mornfang Brown. And now with Doombull Brown, we paint the round-shaped boxes that he has. And once that is done, we coat both of them in Agrax Earthshade. Now I made a mistake and coated the belt, the Rhinox Hide belt with Agrax Earthshade, and that just basically kind of made it worse. I didn't highlight it afterwards because I didn't really think about it, but you don't want to touch, you don't want to make the Rhinox Hide belt any darker. 
And basically for the highlights, we're going to go back with the appropriate color of Mornfang brown on the square ones and Doombull brown on the roundish ones. And we're just going to paint the edges of each of these and fill it in. We don't want the darkest recesses of the packs. We want them to still be dark, but we're just going to basically edge out the edges and fill in some areas for the paint. You can see here. And then with some iron breaker, we then put a dot on each of the metal belt buckles, or I, I don't know what it's called, but the metal buttons that are on each of the packs. And now with iron breaker, we go back and we highlight all the edges and these little plates that are on the canisters in certain areas and the handle and such. Now with Fenrisian Grey and White Scar, we're going to paint the shoulder pads and some other places. Now before with the intercessors that I did last time, the it, I needed more spots that like took away from it. Like there wasn't enough white, the shoulder pads weren't enough, so I'm going to paint this small area on the back of the backpack to add some more flavor to the models. Now the reason I'm using Fenrisian Grey, Grey instead of Ultron Grey is because I actually found out I was out of Ultron Grey since I haven't used it in years. But here you go, Fenrisian Grey first and then you fill it out with White Scar. And now with Steel Legion, Drab, Bane Blade Brown, and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to paint the Purity Seals. We start off with a layer of Steel Legion Drab coating the entire thing. We then highlight the edges and certain raised areas in the center with Bane Blade Brown. Once that's done, we just apply a layer of Agrax Earthshade all over it. And then once that's down, we highlight the most raised areas and head edges with Bane Blade Brown again. All right, we're gonna try something. I'm gonna take this Micron pen, 0.25 millimeters, and I'm gonna try to draw in or stencil the basics of the Black Templar flags and symbols because I am running out of the stencils and I really don't think I have enough for all the Indominus box set. I'm giving these guys a Devastator marking as well as their Black Templar cross. Now the Devastator marking is just two dots up and down and then side by side. It's basically just a V, so I'm marking out the edges of the V. As far as the cross, I'm just, well, marking out the edges of that. I then take Abaddon Black in a fine brush and then I just fill, uh, I connect the dots and then fill them in. The Devastator symbol was pretty simple and easy. The Crusader Cross, however, was terrible. I just can't do it. I then go back with some white scar white to help clean up the edges of the symbol and thin out the V a bit. Since my cross was so bad, I just covered it back up with white scar white and then just applied one of my last transfers to it. I, I don't ha really have that many more. And now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, I then will apply two coats 
onto the shoulder pads. More well, one on the one that has a V, but two coats on the ones that have the decal to help seal it in better. And going back to Liquitex modeling paste, we then use it and we coat the entire base in it. We then apply a few little rocks here and there, and some sand overall. And then what we do is we basically get an air dryer and then we blow on it from a distance and slowly bring the base closer to the air dryer to rapidly harden the paste. Once the paste is pretty dry, we then tap it a bit and it molds like jelly and the dirt and sand presses in. And then we just file in the holes through. I mean, this is still soft underneath and wet. And then we apply the models to it. And so basically what it'll do is we'll see the footprints of the models go in. If this was a very thick layer, the footprint would be bigger, but it's a thin layer of this paste, so the footprint won't be that big, but it will be noticeable. After attaching the models and waiting overnight for it to dry, we then remove the models from the base. We then take Liquitex Matte Varnish, which is a terrible thing, but it works pretty well for this. We then coat the dry bases in this and it'll create a seal that'll keep the rocks and the sand stuck in there for good. However, in my zeal to get it done quickly, I actually forgot to take pictures of the step, or record it entirely. So while the matte varnish was drying, I then went with Skeleton Horde Contrast and Gulliman Flesh, and I'm going to do something with the barrels. I then coat the gun barrels in Skeleton Horde Contrast as a base layer to, to yellow them. Once that's done, I take some Gulliman Flesh and I apply it on the very edges, or the lower half, or the other half. Yeah. The furthest half from the main gun. Now if I had some sort of bluish contrast paint that would do well, I would have applied it as well, but I do not. With the bases dry, we're going to use Rhinox Hide and then we're going to coat the entire base in this. This is going to be a base layer. The bases are going to be simple because we mostly want to focus on the model itself. Once the bases are dried rapidly with an air dryer, we're going to take Vallejo Dark Slate Gray and we're going to mix it with water and turn it into a slurry and then we're going to apply this all over. The density of the pigment in the water is up to you, but for me the thicker the better. While that dries with Vallejo Liquid Gold Old Gold, an alcohol based paint, we're going to paint the chest Aquila, the left uh, Van Brace Guard, and any other little gold things. Like the guns have some aquilas and stuff, I'm gonna paint those gold as well. And this applied is a really nice, bright, shiny gold. And upon completion of that, we then begin final assembly. Now in my zeal, I forgot to record that I coated the bases in AK Interactive Ultra Matte to seal in the pigment powder so it wouldn't fly anywhere. I then attached and super glued the models onto the bases. And then learning from the intercessors, I'm going to take Mornfang Brown and then I'll coat the entire edge of the base with it, since it is going to be another contrast to the black armor, since black isn't that colorful, I want to add all these side things as much as I can to add some color and flavor to the model. And that is it, the eradicators are done. Now here's where I have my final thoughts. I'm going to give this model kit, or my painting of it, a 6 out of 10. Now, there were a few issues with it. First off, I screwed up the belt. I should not have put Agrax Earthshade on the Rhinox Hide belt. I did improve by put, uh, putting a Mornfang Brown base, but there were a few things that I didn't like. Like, for instance, uh, in some places, like the helmets, that just seem to blend in with the models. Uh, the sergeant guy is fine, but the other two, uh, not so much. I'm basically finding that I need to do something to add more color or more distinction with the different armor bits. As far as I can tell, I'm thinking for future 
uh, these black Templars. Not my next project, but I'm going to add some more white plates onto it in different areas to make it more pop from a distance. Now this has been a good learning experience overall, but well, I'm going to have to I'm going to move on from these basic troopers. I'm going to start going up. I'm going to start doing the characters. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the the I don't know what guy. The guy who looks like a chaplain but is not uh, what does it here say here? The Judicar. Yes. So the next model, I'm going to try to bring out all the stops. I'm going to try to make it look awesome. So everyone, thanks for stopping by. If you like the video, like the video. Share it if you want to share it. Comment if you have anything to nitpick or say. Subscribe for more because I still have more models in the Indominus box set to get through. And, well, see you later.